Hello, and welcome to OEN Engage. Thank you for joining us for today's session. So, you're thinking about publishing. My name is Karen Lauritsen. I am the Senior Director with the Open Education Network. And before we get to the heart of the matter, I have a few housekeeping items. On Monday, we kicked off the week with our land acknowledgement and community norms. If you would like to review them, you'll find the links in the chat. You're also welcome to share your land acknowledgement. And if you'd like to learn more, visit Native Land Digital. Please note this session is being recorded and your comments or questions are welcome during the session. So you're thinking about publishing. Please tell me more. I'd like to know a little bit more about what you're thinking about publishing. So we're going to do a quick Zoom poll and I've given you a few options here. Does publishing seem exciting? Maybe terrifying? Publishing totally seems like your jam or maybe it's best left to other people or maybe none of these feels quite right in which case you are welcome to say more in the chat. This is a single answer, multiple choice, and I do acknowledge that it's possible you may want to select more than one, but we're just going to try and get a sense of things. Wow, right now we're just down the middle here. This is a great group. <clears throat> okay, not only do we have great responses, but 100% of you have answered. So looking at the results, uh, it's just about split. Some of you find it exciting, terrifying, your jam, not for you, or these don't capture my thoughts. Like Anne Marie. Anne Marie has started publishing, but still feels as though she has no idea what she's doing, despite having several publications under her belt. You too, Kelly. <laughs> Amanda says it's an exciting, terrifying jam. Excellent. Well, um, we are going to try and um, speak to all of these feelings in the next 45 minutes. Welcome. Publishing is indeed so many things. And in addition to uh, what we're doing in supporting authors with publishing, we of course are whole human beings. And so in addition to my role at work, I also love to read, I like to write, and I'm really into habitat gardening. So gardening for wildlife. So that's a little bit about me. For our time together, we are going to start with an inclusive definition of publishing. Publishing, as we've already established, can mean many things sort of internally for us, but it can also mean many things in the world. It's a very broad term and we are here for all of it. Um, we're gonna define types of support for all of the different types of publishing. We're going to explore common publishing scenarios, provide next steps for staying connected, and if we're lucky, have time for questions and discussion. Of course, if we can't fit everything in, I am very happy to meet or email with you at another time. So first, let's define publishing. Um, I'm gonna put a whole bunch of words on the slide here and it's just gonna seem like I used a thesaurus and I'm just giving you synonyms, but truly I believe that each word reflects a definition or a different assumption or priority about publishing. So, some people call it creation. I'm going to create this new work, this new book. I'm going to author it or write it. Um, maybe the person really identifies as a maker. A book is so much. It's a cover, it's content, it's structure, it's words. You know, there's a lot involved there. But not everybody's starting from scratch. Some people are going to adapt a pre-existing work. They're going to copy edit. They're going to change images. They're going to modify it, maybe in small ways, maybe completely overhaul it. Um, but at the end of the day, they're producing a work and they're going to post it because in order for something to be published, it has to be shared. It has to be posted and available. And uh, since many of us are librarians, it needs to be archived, preserved for the future. And so all of these things start to encapsulate publishing. And again, the Open Education Network does not think that publishing an open textbook has to happen this particular way, or 
You're only a publisher when you meet this particular criteria. We really are here to support you if you're doing one small piece of all of these things, or if you aspire to do them all, or perhaps are doing them all. That said, we do have a publishing focus, and that is open textbooks. Now, of course, what you may learn or the services and support we may offer may extend beyond textbooks themselves to other OER, but at the, at the heart of the matter, um, we're helping you publish open textbooks because of our connection to the open textbook library, and those will have permission to edit, hierarchical organization, and some structure, and that structure is going to inform accessibility. The OEN is not a publisher for the most part. We do put out some resources, but we're really here to support you so that your author or your institution is the publisher of the work. So those are some, some fundamental frameworks. Now, today I'm going to talk about our publishing support in three different areas community, infrastructure, and professional development. And those three areas uh, work together to form a delicious, perhaps, and complete picture. So um, that's the, the publishing support that we're gonna think about. From a bird's eye view, generally, our support can fall into those categories in the following ways. Um, everybody loves a table, although I should say that's complicated in publishing, but. For, for argument's sake, it's nice to see things neatly organized here. Oh, in community, we offer tea time. We offer the Google group. In infrastructure, we have these different publishing platforms. And over in professional development, we offer these different opportunities. But really, these, these lines, if you will, in the table are permeable. Um, we also have infrastructure when it comes to our manifold group. It's not just the tool. It's the people using the tool. So I'll talk more about that. But I wanted you just kind of to have a broad view before we start digging into um, the details. Okay, I really like threes. So we're gonna look at three common scenarios that um, we can find at different institutions. So for example, you may be at an institution that is interested in publishing. You've heard some faculty ask you about it. You're open to exploring, that's where you're at right now. Great, we have some support for that. Perhaps you're at an institution where there's some funding and you're thinking, I, we can run a creation program. We can have a grant program. We have support for that. And finally, you may find yourself at an institution where you or your colleagues have expertise. You've been publishing, you know some things, and you really want to leverage that expertise. Super. We have some suggestions for that, too. And just like the support table on the previous slide, these scenarios are here kind of for the sake of conversation, but of course, they are permeable. You may have interest funds and expertise. You may have a lot more, um, but this is for the sake of conversation to kind of talk about the different support that we offer. So <clears throat> first scenario, we have interest. We don't have a lot of experience. There's limited capacity. Our plates are already full. We've heard publishing can really involve a lot. We don't wanna get in too deep, but we have an institutional repository and no, we don't have any money. So what can the OEN do to support a person in this position? Well, here are some suggestions. Perhaps enroll in Pub 101. That is an orientation to open textbook publishing, and it really lays out some of the common issues that you can anticipate and connects you with other people who've been there before so that you can learn from their mistakes and their successes. I would suggest starting with a project um, maybe that's through a relationship that you have with somebody and just so that you can learn together, really kind of get a handle of things and test the waters. Maybe in this scenario, you don't want to find yourself doing platform support. You will say to that person, you're already using Word, for example. Maybe it's Google Docs. Write in that tool that you know, and that way you're not having to provide any kind of technical support. But at the end of the day, when that person has finished their project, you are able to offer a safe, permanent place where it can live. And if the project meets the requirements for the Open Textbook Library, there's the link that we need in order to point to it and share it in the Open Textbook Library. 
So there's a lot here that can be done if you're at very early stages, you're just testing the water and you have some general interest in publishing. So a bit more about Pub 101. As you can see from a recent participant, it's great if you're just beginning to work with a faculty author on a first project. Uh, once a year, we invite you to participate in a synchronous cohort for an informal orientation. That will be coming up again in March, 2025. But in the meantime, there's also the Pub 101 curriculum, which is in Canvas. There are templates, there are stories, there's all sorts of guides for you so that you can start to familiarize yourself with uh, what's involved. You can also watch previous uh, videos of Pub 101 cohort cohorts if you'd like to get started. And I believe we have a couple people in this call who are on the Pub 101 curriculum. So if you have questions about that, um, let us know. Here's an overview of what you'll find. Unit one explores what an open textbook is. Unit two looks at planning and building a publishing program. And unit three is all about project management, the nitty gritty of project management. Okay. Second scenario, at this institution, they have funds. They're gonna launch a grant program. They think they can support three projects. That sounds like a good number. Hmm. Um, and they plan on consulting on licenses. So helping authors understand what Creative Commons licenses mean and selecting one that works for them. And they are going to set a contingent deadline. And that means that before they pay someone, they're gonna make sure they have a deliverable. They have a part or a whole of the manuscript. So that's the general outline of uh, someone in this funding scenario. So let's take a closer look at their options. They may decide to adapt a template from our existing publishing toolkit. Now this toolkit has many different um, forms and checklists that you can take and use for your program, both internally and with your authors. Perhaps you decide you do wanna offer a publishing platform and some tech support. So you contact Pressbooks and let them know you're an OEN member. They will extend a 30% discount to you and your institution. I would advise uh, you may want to think about an imprint. You're offering this grant program. You're taking on a whole lot of work. What do you want to do to sort of showcase that work, both for your authors and for your library and for your staff? How do you want to show the campus that we're behind this, we're organized, and look at what we're creating for our students? And of course, I'm going to put in a plug for the Open Textbook Library. You may, in this scenario, as I think Amanda did with Palmy, who's also in this call, you may want to um, require that all of the projects meet the Open Textbook Library criteria so that you can share them beyond your campus. A couple more words about the publishing toolkit. You'll note there is an asterisk there. Um, that's because our publishing advisory group is currently expanding our existing toolkit into two different toolkits. The templates that you'll find there cover all of the project and program stages. And we're very excited to roll out this update at the September tea time. So look for that. They've been working very hard thinking about uh, what it is that you need to develop your program. And so um, we're excited to share that with you. But in the meantime, you can find this on the community hub if you have access or you can find it on the OEN website under the publishing tab, along with other resources. Jamie's also putting them there in the chat. Thank you, Jamie. If you're looking for the criteria of uh, what a book needs to have in order to be in the Open Textbook Library, you'll find it under About Open Textbooks. Okay, finally, our third scenario. At this institution, they have it all. They have expertise. Um, I should say uh, they have expertise and should check to make sure that they have it all, particularly the interest and the funding. It can be tempting 
when um, we hire somebody or when we ourselves have um, the tools or background, it can be tempting to say like, oh, I know how to do this, we should do this. But first make sure that the time is right on your campus, that there is interest. Um, you might wanna check and see if you are looking to run a grant program that there is funding. Um, and if these things are maybe not quite as ready as you are, there are ways that you can build that momentum so that when you do launch a publishing program, you know, people are on the relatively the same wavelength. Okay, in this scenario, you are definitely in a great position to showcase faculty work in, in ways that perhaps people in the other two scenarios aren't quite there yet. And I'll say more about that in a minute, but it does relate to copy editing and design. And I would say in this scenario, developing a brand can be really powerful. So what are some options for doing those things? Well, um, we have a relationship with Scribe. They're what's called a back office service provider. They provide all sorts of editorial services for huge publishers, um, publishers of books that you have on your bookshelf for nighttime reading, as well as for uh, textbooks. You may decide that you wanna really be there to support the textbook development. So working side by side with an author to come up with the structure of the book, the hierarchy, um, or even just to work with them on being sure that their images and their stories and their case studies are inclusive. You may want to provide very um, close project management, ensuring that the timelines are being stuck to. And then you may want to go out and market your institutional imprint. Again, I will pause and say that just because I'm sharing these options for someone who has expertise at their institution, it doesn't mean that I don't think these things could also work for someone who has interest or someone who has funding. So these are very permeable options that I'm, that I'm suggesting. Okay, so some of the editorial services that are available through Scribe, through freelancers and others include copy editing, proofreading, indexing, typesetting, design, ancillary development, and pre-press services. And this can be a great option if, let's say you have one-time funds, you maybe don't have expertise, but you know that um, you can pay someone to do these things, or you do have expertise and you know how valuable these services can be. We live in an era where one person can do almost everything totally by themselves. And it's incredible what a single human can accomplish but in publishing, as in many areas of life, when people work together and bring their strengths and their different areas of expertise to a book, to a publishing project, it is incredibly stronger and richer for that expertise. So if you are, are in a position where you can offer editorial services, you make your faculty author look that much better and you make your publishing um, program look that much slicker, if you will. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of a book that has been designed and a book that has been um, written in Word. So you can find this book in the Open Textbook Library. Uh, it is called Inferring and Explaining. On the left, a perfectly wonderful book. I do not mean to suggest that there is anything wrong with chapter 11 on the left. On the right, you can simply see that a designer has touched this text, if you will. There's color, there's um, uh, typesetting, there's a two column format. It just has a different look and feel. So that's a, a quick snapshot of what a, um, a designer or an editorial services provider can offer. Now, a new resource that you may be interested in, regardless of the scenario, is our introduction to OER publishing workshop. These slides really aim to make a case for why writing an open textbook can be a rewarding process, what it offers students, and frankly, why someone would wanna spend a lot of time and energy making this type of resource. It also sets you up for rolling out your particular program. And if you're at all familiar with the adoption workshop, it follows much of the same argument. A lot of the um, initial slides are very similar in terms of um, making a case for why this can be a, an effective way to 
reduce obstacles for students. So if you tune in later today, Kelly Smith from Eastern Kentucky University will walk through these slides and talk about how she um, would deliver them in her context so that you can get a sense of that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing hopefully many of you again with Kelly later today. Okay, now it's time for another Zoom poll. We've walked through three scenarios. We've talked about how there are many ways to publish. I'm curious which of the three you feel most closely relates to your particular context. So scenario number one, faculty are interested. Maybe we'll try a test project and learn about publishing. Scenario number two, we have funds. We're gonna do a grant program and maybe we'll provide a publishing platform. Scenario three, we have money, we have expertise, we're gonna do a brand, we're gonna do an imprint. Or number four, thanks but no thanks, this is not our scene. Or again, if you feel like you would rather say more about your program in the chat, I invite you to do that. Okay. Respondents are coming in. It looks like for most of you, there is some interest and you're thinking about trying a test project to learn more about publishing. That's fantastic. A good portion of you also have funds and some, and almost the exact 23% uh, versus 21% have funding and expertise and you're thinking about developing a brand and imprint. And this is not our scene. Great to know yourselves. Glad that you're here. And um, thank you very much for letting us know where you're at. Okay. So regardless of the scenario you find yourself in, the resources are out there. If you find yourself thinking, I need to create this, wait, stop. That resource probably exists or something very close to it that you can adapt. Let us know, we can point you towards something. I'd also say that in most scenarios and chime in here in the chat, if you wanna back me up here, expect surprises. Something you never anticipated is going to happen throughout the course of supporting authors in writing and publishing open textbooks. And most certainly deadlines will be missed. But at the end of the day, if all you come away from, from this presentation is that you're not alone, you're a human being, no matter how intense these projects can sometimes be, um, then we're happy. Um, you don't have to take on this work by yourself. It can feel isolating sometimes, but there is a community of people who really want to help and support you. So even if you're the only person at your institution, there are others at other institutions that are here for you. Okay, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about publishing infrastructure. This is um, something that the OEN has been um, really turning their attention to and really um, focusing on because it's such a key part to wanting to do what, what we wanna do. Um, if you don't have the infrastructure to publish, there's really um, a huge barrier there in terms of creating and sharing OER. So. I think it's safe to say all of you are familiar with the Open Textbook Library. If not, please visit. Um, this is our collection of open textbooks that are available all around the world. We also offer, um, or excuse me, Pressbooks offers a 30% discount to OEN members. We have been piloting Manifold and are thrilled to be um, offering Manifold now as a new member benefit at no additional charge. We're just in the midst of figuring out exactly how that will work, but look for an announcement about that in the coming weeks. We're also piloting Keti, which at one point was known as Editoria and another point was known as Katita. Um, and within that is the Open Textbook Planner. This is a tool that we uh, co-built with the COCO Foundation. It exists currently within Keti and helps you structure and plan for an open textbook and create that hierarchy that we're all familiar with. 
Here is a quick look at the Open Textbook Library. You've probably seen this before. I just want to bring your attention in the, let's see, lower right quadrant, you'll notice there's a feature called Coming Soon. So for example, Calni is publishing Gateway to Business Analy Analytics, that's coming up. Iowa State University Digital Press is publishing Supernature, an introduction to bionics projects. This is a feature that our members requested several years ago. If you have access to the community hub, you can enter the information for textbooks that you and your authors are working on at this time. So if you were to click on that area, you would see a long list of textbooks in development so you could learn more information. I think this is a really cool feature. It showcases the hard work of what you're doing and potentially connects you to people who are interested in perhaps adopting the book or collaborating on a future edition. As I mentioned, there is a discount for Open Education Network members with Pressbooks. Um, if you go to their site, they will tell you uh, how you can get that. Here is um, our Manifold community as it stands now. A little bit of background. We started with a very small group. Um, they experimented with Manifold. They gave us feedback. They um, created projects. And we were hoping to um, figure out if Manifold would work for the larger group based on their experience. But it was a small group. So we decided, OK, we need another phase, a slightly larger group of a Manifold pilot. And that's when things really broke open and we saw so many more projects being created. We've had so much request for access. Um, Jamie may be able to say, I think there's somewhere between 60 and 70 institutions in the OEN have requested access to take a look. And so we're just thrilled to be able to offer this to you as a benefit coming up. Katita, now Ketty for many, is another tool um, there is a small group of people who are experimenting with writing and Katita. Katita is really, um, I should say Ketty, is um, for those who really want to prioritize the printed book, whose um, interest in that structure or beauty or template and design is, is a top priority. So this is a good tool for them. Now within that tool, I mentioned the Open Textbook Planner. This is just a quick look at it. But the idea is that you have a tool to support you in creating an outline for your book, organized into parts, chapters, and sections. And then that work informs the display or the design of your book so that you or the author does not have to worry about formatting and heading and all of this. It's taken care of based on your outline. So that's also happening now. Now, Obviously, I just told you about Manifold and Ketty, but I put this slide here because I wanted to say that no publishing program is just about a platform. All of us, myself included, are always tempted to go straight to the tool. Oh, you want to publish? Great. Use Pressbooks. You want to publish? Google Docs will work. But it's more than a tool. You need people. Um, you need a vision. And so this is here to remind you that not only do we offer Manifold and Ketty, but we offer you other people who are using that tool, who are trying to figure out, who are leveraging it, who are struggling or succeeding. And so again, it just speaks to how you're not alone in trying to use a tool, which we all have experience in feeling very alone using different tools and it can be frustrating, but not here. Okay, now a couple words about service communities. Um, we have a Pub 101 committee, as I mentioned. This is a group of people who are thinking about beginners particularly, who want to support you as you venture into these waters. And so they're keeping a close eye on the Canvas curriculum, making sure it's up to date, something as simple as making sure the links work, to making sure that they're, it's pointing to the most recent and best version of a resource or a template. We also have the publishing advisory group. This is a group of people who are bringing you tea time almost every month. They are updating toolkits and are also thinking about how we can support you as you're learning to publish a project or program. All of us try to emphasize the practical and the friendly. Um, 
We're all just trying to make things work here. Uh, nobody has all of the answers, but we can struggle together and sometimes even have a little fun. I mean, this looks like a fun group of people, right? This is the committee that is thinking about your Pub 101 experience. Since we just wrapped in the spring, we've been incorporating feedback, thinking about how we can change things up for 2025. And we have some pretty uh, good ideas, we think. Um, this committee is also going to be working on Pub 101 for a faculty audience. This is a big step for us, but it's another way that we think we can support you. If you have a small program and you want to be able to send faculty somewhere to learn about licenses, to learn about the fundamentals of publishing, we're going to be able to offer you Pub 101 for faculty, and we can provide that, um, that foundation setting for you. So coming soon. And here's a look at our Publishing Cooperative Advisory Group. Many thanks to them as well. Um, it's not always easy coming up with a new topic every month to explore, but these folks um, are always thinking about something new that um, they can offer you. And they also wanna hear from you. If there are topics that you're struggling with, things that you're wondering about, please let us know. Um, any of us would be happy to receive your suggestions. Speaking of tea time, which the publishing advisory group organizes on a monthly basis, uh, tea time is really meant to be informal. It's not recorded so that you can feel free to ask any question or share a particularly frustrating story. Um, even when we have a topic set for tea time, we always work to save time for the end for what we call tea and sympathy. That's a chance for you to say what it is you're working on or struggling with and it's basically meant to be an open discussion. So if you're wondering who you can turn to with a question, come to Tea Time, let us know what's on your mind, and um, you'll find a group of people who can brainstorm with you on how to address it. Coming up, our next Tea Time is Monday, August 5th. It is at 1 p.m. Central. That is just our default August Tea Time, first Monday of the month. Stephanie Buck from Oregon State University is going to share a draft of her retention schedule with you. This is for um, programs or projects. The author's left or the author's no longer interested in maintaining their project. You worked so hard together to make this thing happen and now it's languishing or perhaps dying on the vine. Or is it with the open license? Uh, this is what we will discuss at tea time. So the registration is there and hope you can join us. Okay, so Jamie has shared a lot of links in the chat. You can of course share the chat, but do not fear. Uh, all of these resources are available on the website, on our community hub, and there will be a follow-up email after Engage, which will share the slides and many other resources with you. So that is on its way. With about 10 minutes left, we have completed the agenda. We talked about how publishing can mean many things and the OEN is here to support whatever publishing means to you. We've talked about some different types of support we can offer, things that you might wanna think about depending on your scenario. We've given you ways to stay connected through tea time, through different pilot groups, or in the case of Manifold, no longer a pilot group. And now we have reached the time of the session when we can ask questions and discuss. First, I will share my email, kloritz at umn.edu. I'm always happy to hear from you, so don't hesitate to reach out. I'm going to stop sharing my slides now. And I can see you, or at least I can see your names. Are there any questions? I see a lot has been happening in chat. So if I've missed something that I should speak to, please let me know. Okay, Beth, your question, does Pressbooks, Manifold, Keddy, or do, I should say, 
they essentially all perform a similar function or role in OER publishing. Thank you, Amanda. She's looking for a comparison chart that we know is out there. Um, Katie does seem to do typesetting and formatting, which works well for print materials. Um, Cheryl's asking, are there resources with guidance on how to create an imprint? Yes, it is in Pub 101. Um, so between the different members, I can find that one quickly. Cheryl, here's some uh, starter information in the chat. Stephen would love to hear more experiences with Scribe. Is there anyone here who can speak to that? I will also pull up our Scribe documentation. Erin, would you like me to speak? Is that okay? Sure. So hi, I'm Amanda Herford. I work for Palmy, which is a library consortium. And we've worked with Scribe on copy editing services and also proofreading. Um, so what they will do is they will work with the authors to take a manuscript, kind of like a draft manuscript, and go through and add a bunch of author queries and suggested edits. And then they send that back to the author and they work really hands-on with the author to um, kind of solidify what those changes will be. Um, so that was a little bit surprising to me is how much they work directly with the author, at least with the setup that we have. Um, so it allowed us to be completely hands off in that process and just let them do their thing. Um, and then after all of those changes are made, they go through and do a, a solidification process where they take all the changes that were made and incorporate them into kind of a new fresh draft. And then we've taken that copy and put it into press books. And they've been wonderful to work with, very knowledgeable and very kind of flexible. Thanks so much, Amanda. Stephen, I also put a link to the um, scribe documentation in the chat. And it looks like the um, publishing tool comparison document has been found. So thanks to everyone who tracked that down. Anyone else? Matt, with these different publishing resources, does it let you output different formats of the book? Like when we see PDF web page for OpenStax. Yes, uh, let's see. With Manifold, you have an online reading experience and an EPUB, and then you can also link to, um, let's say like the Google Doc version. Jamie, please feel free to chime in. With Ketty, uh, you definitely have a PDF and maybe an EPUB. Is that right, Jamie? Yep, both. Yeah, both. Um, with Pressbooks, there are a lot of different file types that you can export to, including EPUB and PDF, along with uh, several others. Yes, as Amanda said. Beth asks, do institutions try to stick with support one platform or is it not uncommon for faculty to be using different things? I'm sure it varies by institution and their resources and so on. Yes, Beth, you got it. I definitely hear of publishing programs where they say, dear faculty, use whatever you would like. Um, and this can include video. It can include um, different multimedia tools to create all sorts of uh, ancillary experiences. Um, and I hear of other programs where it's like, we are using this one tool. This is what we're prepared to support you with. Um, and so it really depends, I think, on comfort levels at the institution and their vision for the kind of support they're going to offer. Amanda would suggest figuring out what you have the capacity to support. I agree. The one institution that comes to mind for the uh, using different things scenario is Virginia Tech. Um, and if that's something you're interested in learning more about, please let me know. 
Stephen would like to know, what does the downloadable option look like with Manifold, especially the resources collections? I have trouble envisioning that, so I'm not sure if all projects there are eligible for the Open Textbook Library. Yeah, you really um, put your finger right on the uh, button with that one. So since I'm working on the documentation for Manifold going forward, I'm really encouraging people to think about how they can have a complete downloadable file in order to meet the requirements of the Open Textbook Library. Jamie, can you speak to um, the resources collections part of the um, download option? Yeah, I don't know that I have actually uh, exported anything to their EPUB option yet in terms of how that would um, create an exportable file for the resources collections. Um, that's definitely something we can talk to Terrence and Robin about though, and um, see if they can give us some more details. We haven't uh, had an opportunity or a reason to do any exports yet on our own. Um, and we have a, such a small collection for just OEN works um, in Manifold, but that is something we can definitely find out for you. Yes, and um, I think a similar question actually just came through the Manifold Community Google Group, but I cannot recall the details, Stephen, so I'm, I'm happy to follow up and share more. Um, and then Anne-Marie also offers a great workaround. Uh, she links to each book in a publicly available Google Drive folder with docs version and also sometimes a PDF, which is totally fine. Um, but I know that there is a download option. I'm just not sure how it incorporates the resource collection part. It might just be the, um, the body of the book. So Matt would like to know about accessibility checks. Uh, accessibility is absolutely a manifold priority and they have documentation on how they address accessibility. Um, in order to get access to manifold, Jamie just put the form in the chat. Again, we're currently transitioning between pilot phase and permanent phase. And so um, there may be some details there to work out with you. Um, and the stage is gonna try exporting something from Manifold to see what happens. So we have a real live experiment, which is awesome. Thank you. Um, anything else? Anne-Marie put in another Manifold example there. These are great questions. We have about two minutes remaining, not to add more pressure on Anastasia, <laughs> but uh, our time together is winding down. I appreciate that you all um, took time out of your busy day to join us. Again, I hope to see many of you again later when Kelly's gonna walk us through the publishing slides. Cheryl, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Again, if any of you have questions um, after the session, feel free to reach out. Anastasia, thank you for trying. Um, we will follow up and uh, our manifold work will continue. So I see the thank yous. I will bid adieu and um, thanks again. Take good care.